Today, guys, I'm going to be checking out my Godin A6. I'm with Mario, and this is the official way you say Godin guitars. This is an acoustic electric hybrid, uh, and it's pretty unique uh, as, as far as guitars you see commonly. And I want to go over all the features and show you this rig and how I'm using it. And uh, so let's get into it. The first thing I want to say is that this guitar is made in Canada. It's made really well. It's a very high quality instrument, and Godin is really famous for making a highly quality high quality guitars at more reasonable prices i own some of their acoustics as well and uh, they've always been this company that i think gives you better bang for the buck for sure before we go into the features of the guitar i just want to show you what i'm plugged into because it's pretty it's pretty intense rig i have two output jacks on this guitar one will allow me to send just the piezo system the acoustic sound to an amplifier and then the bottom will sell, let me send just the magnetics uh, to the electric amplifier in this case i'm running the magnetic the humbucker to this grandmaster 40 by hughes and kittner into a marshall 412 cabinet <laughs> I'm running the acoustic side into the Hughes and Kidner Era 2 amplifier. So I want to show you some of the features. The first thing is you have a piezo system on this guitar. This system goes to an individual slider volume with three band EQ, pretty much like any acoustic. But where it's different than an acoustic guitar is then you have a magnetic humbucker or a humbucker that is run to another volume and a two band EQ. I'm not a big fan of the two band EQ on the humbucker, but I run it flat and I've never had any problems with it. I just don't see a whole lot of need to boost or beef up the uh, the humbucker although it is one of the attributes that a lot of people buy this guitar for just wasn't the attribute I, I was looking for when I bought this this guitar has a mahogany neck and a spruce top so it's kind of like an acoustic guitar but it is thin and it is a bolt-on and it feels a lot like an American Telecaster the body is about the same size the feel of the carves which is none <laughs> is the same uh, the neck has the same kind of modern C carve it has a tusk nut and they use their own branded Godin tuning keys. Uh, I wish they were locking keys like all guitars that I like locking keys are, but in this case, you know, it's, uh, it's not available. It's not an option you can get. The action on this is amazing. It just plays great. And it sounds really good. The fretboard, however, is Rich Light. If you're not familiar with Rich Light, it's like pressed paper and glue. I know that's a really layman's way of explaining it, but I think that illustrates it really well. When I bought this on Sweetwater, I didn't notice that Godin had changed the specifications on the guitar. Older Godin A6s have a rosewood fretboard. This has a rich light fretboard. So when I got it, I didn't even know it had rich light. I started playing it and I noticed something was not familiar right away. Now I'm not talking about the sound, it's the feel. It felt very slick like effortless. Rosewood to me, what I like about it over some of the kind of clear coated maple neck fretboards is that it has a little resistance, a little friction when my fingers rub against the, the rosewood. This was glassy and smooth. And uh, then I looked at it and I thought, oh, is this ebony? And then looking at it a little bit more, I realized it was not. So when I went to the specifications of the website, I realized it was rich light. For me, I'm not a true believer of rich light yet. 
Although this is my first real experience with it, it's been very positive. I just don't know if I'm ready for all guitars to have it now, but at this point, I don't think I would mind it too much. One thing I might want to mention is how loud is it without, uh, you know, amplification. So obviously I have a lapel mic on. You'll hear the, you'll hear the guitar as much as my voice. Here we go. Ready? Okay, so uh, let's get into where it sounds. Well, the first thing I want to do is just kind of show you, demonstrate the guitar, and then we'll back into how I did it. So working backwards on that, what I was doing was isolating the piezo system into the RC2 looping pedal. And once that looped through this amplifier, I was able to turn off the acoustic because only the looper would have sound now and run to the uh, electric guitar side, the electric guitar amplifier. Now, something to note that's probably very important to mention is that one of the features in the Grandmeister is it has a built-in noise gate. That allows that when I'm moving around, it's not gonna let the guitar feedback, something that an acoustic guitar, even with a humbucker in it, will do. The acoustic amplifier also has a padded feature, which is also stopping the acoustic guitar from feeding back. Yeah, and you wanna take that into account because although I haven't had any feedback issues in this video with this guitar, there is a lot of equipment helping that happen. The guitar is not doing that by its own. Let's get to just the acoustic sound on this uh, guitar to see what we can do with that. Let's go ahead and listen to just the electric guitar sound. Now, of course, you only have a neck pickup, but it's a pretty versatile neck pickup for what it does. <laughs> This guitar is about a thousand dollars although if you don't want the fancy kind of fancy top uh, they have a more streamlined uh, natural looking one for in the nine hundred dollar range and i've seen them used for in the sixes and sevens but you'd have to look on reverb and ebay for that and see what's going on but like I said, great value for the dollar guitars, considering the fact that they uh, use really premium components. They're built really well. And again, made in Canada um, by a reputable brand. I hope you enjoyed this quick little review. I thought it'd be fun to just show you this guitar. Uh, really cool. Like I said, now you know what it sounds like. And feel-wise, I think if you uh, like an American uh, Telecaster that's super light, <laughs> this, would, this would be in your comfort zone for sure. Definitely something interesting. As always, I want to thank the Godan people for making such a great guitar. Thank you so much. And to all of you for spending some time with me today. And until next time, know your gear. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out the rest in the series. Or you can go to www.knowyourgear.net to check out interesting articles and reviews, look at our extensive catalog of repair videos, or you can check out our weekly KYG podcast Fridays at 3 p.m. either on YouTube, iTunes, or SoundCloud. Couldn't help it.